I was just gonna say hello and see what he was doing since we got all this shit out here and you know this place has been burglarized before. He was like he knocked out, like all <laughs> crouched up in the seat. So I like walked up here and as I get to right here, he throws open the door and goes, go away. Yeah. Hey, hey, show me your hands. Hey, Show me your hands. These are my tools. I get it, show me your hands. Hey. Show me your hands. Your hand. Yeah, your hand, what are you doing? I Step out of the vehicle. Get out of the vehicle, friend. Get your hands up. I got my heart going, you tasing us. Fucker. <laughs> Well, we got a little pain. I didn't mean to. Right? We had him. Why'd you, did he, why'd you well, hit him again? Jesus. So that's why. <sighs> Listen, God gave me hands to give unto others. They can learn them. Exactly. <laughs> you ever have somebody at the door like that don't want to get out of the car? Grab that arm, grab that wrist, push that elbow, and just drag it against that B-pillar. They're going to come out. Well, their shoulder's going to pop out. Uh, All right, here we have some never before seen body cam footage of an arrest sent in or submitted by James, who is a friend of Kevin, who is the gentleman who was arrested in this video. And James writes that on May 17th of 2023, my friend Kevin was sleeping in a parking lot of a business he was working for in Oakwood, Georgia. Oakwood Police Department pulled up and that's when it started. I believe his rights were violated. He lost everything he had trying to get out of jail, including the boat he lived on on the lake. And this is Kevin's story as relayed by James. I've worked up there for almost 20 years. I remodeled the inside of the store for the new owners and they wanted me to scrape the flaking paint off the awning and they wanted me to do it at night when no paint would get on the vehicles in the parking lot. I worked that day until about four o'clock and went to get my pressure washer from my boat and went up there and started pressure washing it. My pump started leaking, so I took the pump off and was going to put some gasket compound on it and put it back on. And it started raining, so I got in my car. And then I fell asleep. I got woke up when the officer hit the back of my car. But if you pay attention to what he says, he says I was just going to come up there and ask him what he was doing. And he opened the door and told me to go away. It's BS because he tried to make it look like it was a traffic stop. 15 radio. Did you get a return on that tag? I got no driver's found. Hey, hey, show me your hands. Hey, show me your hands. These are my tools. I get it. Show me your hands. Hey, show me your hands. Your hand. Yeah, your hand. What are you doing? Step out of the vehicle. I, my tools. I've got property over here. I get it. Step out. No, I'm not stepping out. I have, I'm on private property and I'm not stepping out of my car. 515, start me another unit. Can you give me the channel. Ten three, ten thirty three. McCover Road, Big Daddy's Boots. Get out of the vehicle, sir. Get no. your hands up! No. Watch your crossfire. Get out of the vehicle, friend. 515, are y'all 10 for? You need to exit the vehicle, sir. Hey, get your hands up! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! You better not. Man! Look, y'all leave me alone! Get out I of the vehicle! Wrong, over here, someone over here! I haven't done anything wrong! Get out of the Look, vehicle! I haven't done anything wrong! Get out! Help! Get out Help! of the vehicle! Help! No! Uh, you oh, you you kill me. Get you out! You kill me! Oh god! Oh my god! You killed my dog! Oh god! You killed my dog! I haven't done anything wrong! Place your hands behind your back! I haven't done anything wrong! Please stop! Please stop! Why am I under arrest, Lord? Cameras? <laughs> no.
They don't hold up. Yeah, the magnets don't like to stay. I'm just like, y'all gotta hold up, and I'm gonna chihuahua. I'm just like. Do <laughs> <laughs> you need. 515 also start a med unit. Okay. There's already a med unit in route. At 10 4, thank you. 10 4. I didn't hear you, my bad. I got my heart going, you tasing us. Fucker. <laughs> you searched them good? Listen, I just know the moment that the taser's deployed and you still have a hold of it, y'all got the hands. I ain't doing no. I've been tased too many times. Alright. Well, he got a little pain. I didn't mean to. Right? We had him. Why'd you, did he, why'd you well, hit him again? Jesus. So that's why. <sighs> you said you did search him good? Yeah. I mean, he had a meth pipe in his hand, so. Nobody's cut, right? Nah. No, oh, just I him it looked like. No, I was talking about y'all. No, no. No, I didn't. That meth pipe broke. Oh, yeah, I don't see anything on me right now, but. <sighs> no, I got it on me. It's just the inside part of it. You got the pipe on you? He was going this way. Oh, oh, right the... Yeah, he picked it up and put it right there. What'd you say? <laughs> Are you what? Fuck if I know. You one hour ETA. Ten four. One hour ETA. Nice. For the Chihuahua. Oh, he just went home. I saw him drive yeah, past yeah. earlier, so yeah, he, he probably did. just got home. He's like, Buddy, God damn he's it! He's like another Chihuahua. <laughs> he, he almost <sighs> got bit by the last one. Oh really? No, I, well, I, one is a little firm, he, he was like he is. knocked out, like all <laughs> crouched up in the seat. So I like walked up here, and as I get to right here, he throws open the door and goes, "Go away!" Yeah, and I was I like, "What him. are you doing?" And I like pulled out my gun, I was like, "Show me your hands!" And he kept the other one in the ha in the vehicle, and then I just waited for you guys. I just saw you open the door, and he slammed it back, and I was like, "Oh, I that was before you got here." No, as guys. I was getting yeah. up, I, got, I was like, "Damn, I gotta get out of the car." Yeah. Radio patrolling. Rascal. I put it on my pocket. Go ahead. I mean, what the hell is he doing? Email <laughs> to 1037 at 997 Black Drive. 997 Black Drive. Car doesn't even return. In a white Cadillac. Three occupants. Ten. Set up like a little shop here. Well, I'm assuming that's his. I don't know. I'm assuming all this shit's probably his. 1022. But I don't. 1067. Believe that. In the vehicle. Yeah. That door's open. Is it? Shall I see the deep in the area of Black Driver? Reference to the white Cadillac. What subjects in inside? Supposedly spoken 1067. Caller doesn't want to be. You Weird. think this Somebody is all his cords? Say how he knew that we're smoking 1067. He did not. 10 4. All 1060. 10. Leg? On my bad knee. The way he started doing it. <laughs> I've done plenty of mine. Radio Patrol 26. I've been through the process of this. Patrol 26. Being route to alarm at 5241 Bowman Springs Trace. Oh, tasing 5241 Bowman Springs. Point of activation. Mobile app. Listen, God gave me hands to give unto others. They can learn this. Exactly. <laughs> I'm about to show you something. <laughs> you ever have somebody at the door like that don't want to get out of the car? Grab that arm, grab that wrist, push that elbow, and just drag it against that B pillar. They're going to come out, or their shoulder's going to pop out. Uh, yeah. Listen, God gave me hands to give unto others. They're going to earn this. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Filer, thanks for showing up. You said, hey, when do y'all start this way? And I said, well, I'm coming. I'm going away. Well, then I heard 10 3 as I was getting ready to turn into my little hidey hole. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> Straight down money. Ah. Like, right before you, you pulled up, he was getting on the brakes. I thought he was about to try to drive off. Well, I thought that's what he was about to do again yeah. when I pulled up. It's a tiny dog, but I don't want to fuck with it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not in the mood to get bit. And he looks. He looks sad. Yeah, yeah, officer just came up. yeah the dog. Dog safe. Sir. What's up? Do what? Surprise me, man. I got you. Well, I identified myself, and there's blue lights all over my car. 
step out of the car or whatever, and I, I, I just yeah, I mean, woke right up, here. man. You, you woke me up. No, you want to go to the hospital? No. Yeah. Uh, was, this point, you, you are going you, to jail, the okay? Voice, the way you were saying it, man, you was like... You was just... I got you. Well, regardless, you're going to jail at this point, okay? I was right. going to come to that. Hello. Do what? I didn't. Murray did it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Murray do the use of force this time. Well, I have to. I'm tased him. I know. That's what I was saying. Is that his stuff? I'm assuming. I thought he was. Oh, you're tasing him. I thought he. That second thing, I thought he hit you in my arm. <laughs> no, he had already fired both okay. of them. I don't know. It must have came out and got my knee, but right right on the knee, like right above my Doggy my knee, he got me. Sleep. He's probably terrified. He got yeah. yanked out with them. Oh, did he? Yeah. I don't know what he was doing. He kept, he was yeah, he kept, with his hand. He kept like reaching yeah. down. So I mean, when he yanked him out, I, I just grabbed something that looked like, like his arm. You was a dog. I'm like this. I'm like, that's not his arm. It looks like it's a part. Yep. Three thirty nine. He's taking a pump apart. I think he works here. You think so? Yeah. Um. What's his last name? Uh. Wolf. Wolf. Used to be a guy that worked here, done work for him and all that. I've never seen the guy. I, he looks familiar, and I think it may be him. Well, I've dealt with him at the Jameson. Who, this guy? Oh, really? Where, oh, the Jameson? Yeah. Jameson, and he's usually sleeping in a uh, storage place up here. Oh, really? Oh, I've never seen the car up here. So I was not, just, he's usually in the pickup. In I was the, just going to say hello and see what he was doing since we got all this shit out here, and you know this place has been burglarized before. Yeah. Yeah, they got a guy that works here, and I can't remember if that's him or not. Okay. Does like odd and end shit with him. See for car back. Do what? Yeah, yeah finally, back. about time. I think he's got a blue line shirt. He shot you. He didn't shoot me, but he 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 did us. We were yanking him out. We had him on the ground, and then he re-energized it and. Either either the wire was on me or the one of the probes came out and was like on my leg and got me. What, what was he saying? He said he works there. He's he not don't happy. want you. Yeah, he doesn't want you to take him. <laughs> what did I do to him? Hey, you tased him. <laughs> well, I tased him. I'm doing the uniforms. Which is surprising. Oh, I, I thought you will you will place. you add me in there because I slammed him up on the car. Yeah. Thank you. That way I don't have to. I don't have to double do it. That's what his head is oh, probably from. I, I was like, what? I thought I didn't hit him with his head. No. It was a perfect shot, but it, I guess I was either too close or too far. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure exactly what he's charged with currently, but apparently the charges are still pending and he has a public defender. One other thing he said that is pretty sad to me is he has reports from people that say that his dog, his little chihuahua, was just not the same after this incident and that he ended up dying. So that's very upsetting to hear, especially after these cops are joking around about this poor guy's dog. As for the rest of the video, were any of his rights violated? It appears from the footage that this police officer just saw what he deemed to be a suspicious vehicle parked outside this store and just took it upon himself. There was no complaint. There was no actual crime that had been committed. This guy had a legitimate reason to be there, but this police officer just saw what he thought was a, a suspicious vehicle. Then he stopped to investigate. Nothing illegal about that. At some point, the police officer comes up and makes contact with the guy who had been sleeping in his car. He wakes him up. All of this ensues. At what point do constitutional rights become involved? Period. And I think that was the point at which the police officer came up to the car and began to order commands at this guy. There has to be reasonable suspicion, objectively speaking, that some crime has been committed. This police officer just objectively or subjectively believed that it was suspicious, but nobody had reported a crime. In fact, no crime had been committed. This guy apparently had permission to be there. Well, this could be a question for the courts to ultimately decide. 
whether or not that is enough. There are quite a few videos out there, and I've done several already on these situations where people are just trying to sleep in their cars and cops come up and solve some non-existent crime and arrest somebody who had not committed a crime. There was one in a Home Depot parking lot, if I remember correctly. If it were up to me, if I were the judge, no, there's no reasonable suspicion that any crime had occurred here. But this is one of those things where it just sort of depends on the judge. But then it gets taken to a whole nother level. And it was not a traffic stop. But yet this guy is ordered out of his car. Can police officers do that? Probably if a judge were to find that reasonable suspicion existed, the officer would likely be allowed to order the guy out of the car. But then very quickly this gets escalated into a violent use of force where this guy is tased. The issue there is whether or not excessive force was used in forcibly and violently extracting this guy from the car. And the courts will look at the, you know, all the facts known to the officers, objectively speaking, analyze the totality of the, of the circumstances. Generally, these fall under the gram factors. So one, what was the severity of the crime at issue? Well, there was no crime at issue, so that's going to be pretty low. Secondly, whether the individual was uh, evading arrest or attempting to flee. Well, he, he wasn't under arrest. And he doesn't appear to have been attempting to flee because he wasn't under arrest and there was no traffic stop. So both of those first gram factors um, go in favor of really no force being used, if any, against this guy. Then we get to the third and most important gram factor, whether this man posed an immediate safety threat to a police officer or anyone else. I also think this goes in favor of the guy sitting in the car because the taser appears to have been used here to more easily extract this man from the car, to get him to comply with getting out of the car. It wasn't used in response to some immediate safety threat that existed. I would argue, if I were this guy's lawyer, that a taser is not an appropriate device to make it easier to get somebody out of a car. To corroborate that, they end up tasing this guy a second time, and I had to cut it out because it would end up getting age-restricted. But the one officer, as, as the other two officers have this guy, they've tased him once and he's crying in pain and they're pulling him out. Then the, the black officer tases him again. And then you can hear the other officers crying out in pain to tell him to stop because they're, you're tasing us. So he tases his fellow colleagues. And then afterwards you hear them talking about it and laughing about it. But what they admit during this conversation is that even assuming that first taser tasering was justified, the, the subsequent one was not. They said it wasn't unnecessary. We had him. So I would argue that none of these taserings were necessary. None of them were objectively reasonable, and therefore they were excessive force, uh, Fourth Amendment violations. So there you have it. Just another one of these situations where no crime was committed, but police officers perceived some resistance to their authority. And then they create this, you know, process crime, this obstruction crime, resisting arrest, whatever. And we're supposed to ignore the fact that there never was any complaint. There never was any reason to arrest somebody. Um, there was never any reason for the police to be involved. They sort of created a crime out of thin air. It's unfortunate what happened to this guy and his dog because he was just trying to earn a living there. And, you know, people are different. Some people will sleep in their cars. Some people like to live in their cars. Um, some people don't like to open their, their door for the police or, or anyone else. So I hope he beats those criminal charges. If they have an update, please send it my way. I'd love to know what happens. Please subscribe both here and, and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. Follow me on Twitter, John Bryan ESQ, or on Facebook, John H. Bryan, Attorney at Law page. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. Thank <laughs> you.